Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at how to convert the animations that you can do in InDesign from InDesign animations that go out to Flash to HTML5. And you might be wondering, well, why would you want an HTML5 version of the animation? Well, I'm going to show you how you can use those inside the new digital publishing suite. So let's go ahead and take a look. I have a document here that I have a couple of things that are animated. I have the uh, Odyssey text animating in from the left. So if we click on that, you can see the little path that goes there. And I have the plane that kind of loops in and flies in from the uh, top. So we can, of course, preview this animation. Let's go ahead and do that. And we hit the preview. It loads an instance of the Flash Player right inside of InDesign, and we get to see the animation happen. And that's great. And of course, we could export that out as a Swift file and put it right on our website. But what if you want to take that animation and do something with it that, um, for example, doesn't support Flash? In my case, I want to put that in a publication on the iPad. So what I can do is instead of exporting out a Swift file, I can go up to my file menu and export out a um, Flash file and then convert it. Before I do that, though, I don't want the entire document. I don't want the background. I don't want this text. I just want the logo and the animation. So what I did was I selected both of those frames, and I copied them. And once I copied them, I just simply went over to another InDesign document and pasted them in on a blank page. So, of course, you don't see the Odyssey text because it's white on a white InDesign page right now, so you really don't get to see it. And by the way, here's a bonus tip that if you go in and you make your paper color something other than white, let's say we make it a nice blue, we'll be able to um, preview that blue and we'll be able to see it hap see what it would look like. Now I'm going to cancel out of that because I really don't care about the paper color at this point, but that is how you can test things on a you know, white on a non-white background just by changing the paper color. Okay, so now that I have the two frames here, the only other thing I had to do was go into my timing to control which one would happen first. Again, I wanted the, when I copied them in, they were in reverse order. I wanted the writing to come in first, then the airplane to come in second. Sort of like that. And the plane flies in. Great. And now that I've got those there, we'll go ahead and do a file export. And when we do our export, now, normally, since I'm not a Flash guy, I would go ahead and export that out as a Swift file, meaning that that would just be ready to go and put on my website. But in this case, I'm going to export out a Flash Professional FLA file. This is the project file for Flash Professional that a Flash developer would be able to go in and open up and continue working on. Now, even though I'm going to pick an FLA file, and we'll make this one... Uh, We'll make this one the uh, Creative Suite podcast one. Even though I'm going to export that out, I have no intention of, or of opening that in Flash because I'm not, again, I'm not a Flash developer, uh, so I'd be kind of lost in that particular application. So let's go ahead and click OK. And it happens very quickly. There's nothing else to do. It's already done it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch a technology preview application that's codenamed Wallaby. And the way you get this application is I'm going to head over to the browser. You just simply go to labs.adobe.com. There's the URL as it's loading. And in the labs uh, page, you will find the Wallaby pre-release. And what Wallaby allows you to do is convert FLA files into HTML5. So I've got the Wallaby application here. I'm already running it. We'll go ahead and hide the uh, other pieces there. And I'll just browse, and there's the FLA file I just created. We'll go ahead and select it. The next thing it wants to do is just simply hit Convert, and then it wants to know where to put the resulting HTML. So I'm going to make a new folder for it. We'll make a new folder. Actually, I don't want to put it in Office, Adobe Office. There, we'll make a new folder, and we'll call it... Um, Oh, I don't know. Let's call it Odyssey HTML5 Creative Suite Podcast. Okay, so that's the name of the folder. And we'll save it out. And I get one warning. It says this, the conversion was successful. 
but there is a warning. There's, in other words, there was a potential problem. I can drill down and it will show me what the warning is, and it's just a simple thing that says that one of the blending modes or the blend mode is not supported. So in other words, I got it. I got the conversion, but without the blend mode that I may have applied to one of the graphics. That's okay. I'm happy with that. I can, in other words, I can live with that. Let's go ahead and switch back over to the browser now, or the Finder. And in the Finder, I have that CSP folder, and I'm just going to go ahead and drag that HTML file over to Safari so I can take a look at it. And there is my animation. But you notice that the animation continues to loop. That is because by default, that flash file doesn't have a stop action in it. So if you know flash, you can open up that flash, uh, that FLA file and put a stop action after, you know, on the first frame and then it would only play one time. Again, that's not my thing. I'm not a flash guy. So I'm going to do the next best thing. I'm going to go ahead and open up the CSS for that particular um, uh, HTML export. And I'll open it up in Dreamweaver. And Dreamweaver is showing me all the CSS code that Wallaby generated. But I'm going to do a simple thing. I'm just going to click into it, do a command F for find and replace. And I'm searching for infinite, which is, again, it's infinitely, it's looping infinitely. And I'm replacing every instance of infinite with one, meaning I only want it to play one time. And I'll just do a replace all. And it will typically, in my case, find three of those, and it replaced all three of those animation iteration counts uh, with one instead of infinite. And then I just save the file. So now, if I quit or go back to the browser, and it may be cache, so it may take a couple of tries to get it to uh, acknowledge the new non-looping version. Yep, there we go. I knew it would loop again. But if I refresh that, it should just play and stop one time. So that's it. So now that I have my HTML5 version of that animation, I can now head back to InDesign. And in InDesign, I've got this cover file that I want to use it on. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw a frame out. And now that I have my, and you can measure a frame exactly whatever size you need. I know this is going to be pretty much big enough for that animation. But once I have my frame in place, the next thing I'm going to do is head over to the new overlay creator panel, which is part of the digital publishing suite. I'm going to say that this is web content. And then it gives me the option of pointing that to a URL or a file. In this case, I have a file, the one we just exported. So I would go ahead and choose that file. Again, we, want, we don't want the Adobe Office one. We want the uh, Creative Suite podcast version. We just point to the HTML file, not the CSS. And we choose that as our overlay. And then we have the option of controlling how that animation will happen in our digital magazine. Since it's the cover and users may not even know it's there, I do want it to uh, autoplay. And I do want a, a little bit of a, a delay, maybe one, one and a quarter seconds, something to that effect. Now that I have that there, I also want it to have a transparent background because, again, I want to be able to see through it to the mountain scene below here. And that's pretty much it. So we're going to have it autoplay, transparent. We don't even need to allow any user uh, interaction because it's just going to play. Now, hitting preview here would normally preview this in the desktop viewer, but it will not preview that animation, so I'm not even going to waste my time trying it. And, of course, if I'm making this uh, as a magazine cover for both portrait and landscape, I would make the landscape version, which I've already done, and put the exact same frame in it, which I just copied and pasted it so that we would be able to see it. Then I would head over to my Folio Builder, and I would create, uh, sign into my uh, Acrobat.com account and create my new Folio, which I have already done, containing that cover so that I would be able to look at it on my iPad or Android tablet. So now let's head over to the tablet and take a look. So I'll just bring up my document camera here. We'll go full screen on that. And here we are in the Adobe Content Viewer on the iPad. And there's my magazine cover in the upper left-hand corner. We'll just go ahead and press view. We'll press view. There we go. And we'll see our animation happen on the device in real time. And yes, 
I have the horizontal version of that as well that will animate and come out as well. So that is HTML5 animations created in InDesign and then playing back on the iPad in the digital publishing suite using the um, animation and overlay creator and folio builder, which is all part of the digital publishing solution. And I showed you ways of working with that in the last episode. So with that, uh, I hope you got something out of how you can convert standard animations, simple animations from InDesign into HTML5, and you can either use them in the DPS suite or just on your website. If you wanted to create a web version of an animation that um, did not require Flash, that's one of the quickest, easiest ways of doing it. So, thanks for your time, and thanks for watching. Again, my name is Terry White.